Hello and welcome back and that is right today I'm going to very quickly relatively speaking talk you through exactly how to install Plex Media Server on your Ugreen NAS. Now a number of you have got hold of your Ugreen NASes now at the end of the campaign the first wave of fulfillment is taking place and a number of you have reached out and asked about the installation of Plex indeed. For the last week or so, quite a lot of you have been in touch. Now, the reason it's taken me this long is simply that I've been in Taipei for Computex. And this is going to be kind of a seat of the pants installation, but I will be doing a much deeper version of this in our Ugreen NAS series coming very, very soon for setting up the device right. But for now, let's crack straight on. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to go into the App Center and install Docker. It is a container application where you can run micro apps rather than a whole virtual machine and a whole operating system Docker allows you to run individual apps in a sandbox environment and it's a really useful tool go ahead and install it like any other apps and once that is done open up the docker application which will appear on the list of apps on screen and then from there go into the image tab from there select image database and type in the word plex and the first thing that's going to hit you when you do this is there's going to be a multitude of different flavors of plex to choose from personally for this installation i'm going to be using linux server slash plex but as you can see there are lots of different versions you can play with each with their own bells and whistles go ahead and once that's done click download from there select the latest version and then click confirm this will download that image there in the background which will eventually appear on this tab here known as local images these are images for containers stored on your machine while that's doing that head into the file manager and from here if you haven't already go ahead and create some subfolders for your multimedia now if you've already put multimedia on your nas so by that what do i mean i mean that you've gone ahead and uploaded all your media onto your nas which is incredibly straightforward so for example i've created a new shared folder that you can go ahead and do the same you can go ahead select this plus select new shared folder give yourself a shared folder name from there create that shared folder make sure that you've selected the right volume so that's the area of storage on your system that you should have already have done and then from there click create now i've already done that i've created a folder here called plex and in here i've selected another folder called media and inside there a whole bunch of other folders now I would recommend creating all of these folders as well for config data, movies, music, pictures, uh, transcode and TV shows. Pictures can also be called photos, by the way. But if you've already created subfolders for your movies and TV shows, don't you don't need to change them and create new folders. We can reuse those as well. But if you haven't already, go ahead and create this new clean spread here for all of these folders and go ahead and start moving data into them. So as you can see, in the case of here, I've already got a movie file in here and if i wanted to all i'd have to do is drag and drop directly into this folder array and it would start uploading it as you can see i've already done that if we go into tv shows i've already dumped 30 rock you can either drag and drop or select the plus or sorry the upload aisle i'm there and then select a file on your local machine it's that straightforward so the multimedia is now on here so we can go back into docker as you can see docker we've got our layout there in the background and make sure you select the plex image that you've downloaded in my case linux server slash plex from there click the plus symbol and now we're going to start creating our new tailored docker uh, a tailored container in docker first things first give it a name or leave it by default it doesn't really matter if you're worried about security by the way i would maybe change that but for the sake of first time setup maybe believe as it is um, but also with regards to security it is also worth considering if you wish if you are going to use your ugreen nas for other things going into user management and creating a brand new user for plex and that plex user just make sure you give them a decent amount of access to your files and folders so just keep that in mind that when you have created that user go into permissions and settings and make sure you've given them access to the new folder you've created there read and write ideally but at the very least read writing will come in later during metadata scraping now returning to docker here we're going to keep that name next how much of the system resources do you want to allocate to this docker as a maximum in my case i'm going to give it full access the same goes for memory access as well next up you want to make sure you select yes to containers being restarted whether it is because the plex uh, container may have failed or because you've installed an update 
always make sure that this option is set to yes as it ensures that the docker doesn't remain offline if you're far away and you're not able to restart the container or indeed the whole system next up we need to create uh, the directories that we're using for our storage pools as mentioned earlier on these are those folders that we created within our plex setup here to make sure that the plex container has access to the right areas of the system whenever we need it so the first one we need is config the next one we need is data so slash data next up if i can type while looking at the screen we need to have transcode and then after that, it's really down to you. You can go ahead and put music if you intend to store music. Go ahead and select um, photos if you're going to go for photo media. And finally, if you're going to be going for uh, movies or TV shows, go ahead and create individual folders for each of those. And there you go. Make sure that each of these have got read-write access. Again, read-write you're going to need for metadata scraping. You don't necessarily have to have it, but I would still recommend having it on there. And finally... Go ahead on the left hand side and select each of the appropriate directories to each of these so for example right now we're looking for config so just go ahead and find that folder you created earlier called config repeat this step for each one of these folders next up now we've created all of these we have to give our plex container a network identity so it can be found personally i do recommend running this on the shared network that you're utilizing with your nas because that way it simplifies things in terms of network traffic however if you're running a setup with what you want to bind a different physical connection of the rj45 those network ports on the system to be dedicated to plex just to make sure that people streaming on plex isn't oversaturating your network bandwidth uh, for other processes you can give it its own dedicated connection if you choose personally i'm going to go with host so it's sharing the same host connection with the ugreen nas rather than utilizing its own physical connection but again that's really up to you so the next thing we need to do is fill out some environmental variables. These ultimately tell Plex the account that it needs to use in command line as well as ensuring that the system is running smoothly with the network and the direct internet connection that you may be utilizing for Plex remotely. You're going to need to go ahead and create five individual variables, two of which are going to be utilized for identifying your account on the system within different user groups and ultimately giving Plex the right credentials for the NAS to be, you know, telling it it can do certain things right and wrong next up we need to assign the time zone that the system is in next we're going to be running the version of plex that we're running there and finally the plex claim token this is ultimately the means with which plex identifies the server within a certain account something we'll talk on uh, talk about in just a wee moment now to get, uh, get these first two we are going to have to do a wee bit of command line now there's different command line tools out there that you can use uh, wondershell um, open um, ssl that sort of uh, open ssh even i'd recommend downloading the tool putty it's completely free and although it can be complex the way we're going to be utilizing it today it is not just go ahead Ahead and click that top option there download and install the application and it will appear and looks a little bit like this get putty up and running and putty is a little command line window like this one and we're coming back to that in just a moment next up let's bring that back there on screen go back into our new green nas and as you can see from here we go into the control panel from there, we have to go ahead and select terminal. And from terminal, we need to make sure that we temporarily, keyword there, temporarily enable SSH. By default, that should be off. You're going to need to turn it on. And don't forget to turn it off afterwards. Click apply. And then from there, go ahead and go into putty as you've got here on screen. Go ahead and we see that the port is 22 and on putty ensure that 22 is the port as well and go ahead and enter the ip of your nas that's that 192 number at the top but it will be different for you perhaps it's a 169 uh, direct ip but for now key in that number you see there at the top in my case 192.168.0.17 but it will be different for you go ahead and click open it will open a new window it may ask you uh, or at least warn you that what you're doing is command level access into your nas go ahead we're not going to spend too much time on this um, so next up enter the user credentials that you're going to be associating your plex media server container with into putty make sure they've got a decent level of access on the system enter the login information if when you're typing the password you notice that no characters are on screen don't panic it just doesn't show it 
go ahead and click enter and if you're successful it will give you a lot of information here next up type the letters id space and then the user account that you're utilizing in my case there we are and the numbers we need are the first ones the uid number 1002 and the gid number of 10. Keep those numbers to one side and make your way back into your uh, Docker application window here. And we need to enter that information here. The larger number will be featured there at the top, in my case, 1002. 1002. And next up, the GUID was 10. Go ahead and safely close um, uh, terminal by typing the word exit and then make your way back into the control panel and disable ssh once again just ensure that is disabled then from there the next thing we need to do is identify our time zone we can't just put the country we need to be a little bit more precise about the locations of the time zone now we do this by utilizing local time zone co commands in docker so we can see a whole list here let's bring that into our list of tabs and again depending on the docker image you choose to use you can actually find links to that list along the line with a lot of these command lines as you can see from this one here it actually links towards it now in my case i'm in the uk so i'm just scroll down and i'm going to find europe and i'm going to find europe london i didn't have to do that i could just go ahead and use the ones based on gmt but for me i'm going to go ahead and enter that value you there you can see europe london next up version we're using a version within docker and finally plex claim now to get this command here this is how we bind our plex account with docker so go ahead and make sure you've already created an account for plex as you can see i've done here and then next up you have to go ahead once you've created an account type in the words plex.tv slash claim now i'm not going to click this because it will give you my claim code but if you click that tab a command a line will appear on screen a url that you need to copy and paste into that window field there so i'm going to go ahead and do that now as you can see i've now filled out all of those variables alongside the claim code what about next well down here we can talk about privileges now privileges and functionality and access rights are what we're going to give to the plex uh, container within docker if you don't know what you're doing leave it all as default if you want to give it super user access go ahead and give it enabled access but again if you don't quite know what you're doing i would recommend leaving those permissions and functions to default because they should be enough once you double check that all the values you've entered are correct go ahead and click done and then from here it is now going to create our container of plex media server there running on this system now give it a moment or two go into the overview you'll see the images and the container you've created there and as you can see from this container it is now up and running here in the background double click if you want more information and as you can see it's up and running if you're having any problems go into the log to find out more about it but for now as you can see it is indeed running the next thing we need to do is log into Plex via our web browser. So in my case up here, we've got two options open to us. Number one, we can go ahead and enter the following command. We can enter app.plex.tv if we choose to. Generally, as a rule of thumb, this will get you into the Plex on the local area network. If the Plex uh, Docker is running on that shared host network identity, otherwise open up a brand new tab and type in the IP of your NAS, that 192 number we mentioned earlier, and then on top of that, put colon 32400 slash manage. Again, either one of these should do the trick. If we go ahead and use app.plex.tv, as you can see, we're now making our way in and we can start configuring our brand new NAS. Go ahead and select that. We've got the name of our NAS here, so I'm just going to call this one you green flash because i've used quite a lot of NASs. If you want to access the NAS remotely, go ahead and click the tick there and click next. From here, we want to start organizing our media, and this is where we choose where all the media is being found from and being scraped from. So in this case, with the Films tab, I can go ahead, select Folders, select Media Folders, and as you can see, there are all the folders that we added earlier on. So in my case, select Movies, and there's I added a file there earlier for Little Shop of Horrors within that folder. Again, make sure you get the overarching directory more so than anything else. With Plex Scanner, this is what you're going to use to scrape that metadata. You can leave that as by default. But if sometimes Plex isn't finding the cover art, the artists that are featured in your movies, then you can go ahead and change the agent if you wish to find better results. Go ahead and repeat all of these steps with every single directory. So, for example, for TV programs, go ahead and find the directory that you added last time for that media.
once you've added them go ahead and click next if you want to have little add-ons for plex go ahead and use them but personally i give most of them a miss and as you can see right now it's now scrolling through the media that i've added to the system if you've missed a folder or you want to edit a folder don't worry just select the three dots select manage server select settings scroll to the bottom select libraries and you can add or alter the existing folders you can see here on the system in the background we will make our way back to the ugreen nas that i've set up here we're able to see on the films tab it's already side scraping that metadata for us we've got all of the actors we've got all of that background information and indeed that will slowly get added to all of the other folders as we add more and more features and functionality and it you know the amount of time it will take will differ depending on your library setup but in the case of for example this folder here if we want to we can go ahead and re and change and rescrape some of that metadata as well as as mentioned earlier on going back into those settings there going to the bottom and then changing the folder or at the very least what the um, database of the scraped metadata will be for those harder to find uh, directories Next up, when it comes to transcoding, chances are if you bought a Ugreen NAS with a decent little CPU inside, you did so because you needed that hardware to really process a lot of higher end media. Perhaps it is media that is running on HEVC and you're not running HEVC devices, or it's an 8K version of Avatar that you plan on watching on an old iPhone that you want to convert. To enable transcoding, go into that More tab. Again, select Ugreen, the NAS that you've created. Select the three dots, go into Manage Server, select Settings. From there, select the option Transcode. Coder. from there select the option make my cpu hurt scroll to the bottom and as you can see with the hardware transcoding device you can choose whether you want to use the hardware transcoding or graphic enabled integrated graphics or let it automatically flick between them again most you agree nazis now arrive with integrated graphics so you can set that to automatic or select it manually it really is up to you and that's really it we've now got plex media server running on our you green nas let me know in the description below if this video has helped you i know this has been a speedy overview we will be doing a much more detailed version coming very very soon and i recommend checking that out along with the rest of the setup guide series but apart from that there are links in the description to other guides as well as more content on this coming up soon i hope you found it helpful let me know if it does uh, if it has helped you and apart from that have yourselves a bloody great week